morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my lady Calvin, Joe Google as well as Joe Bayer in the house. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Google Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here. Let's wake up our football guys here on this Monday. Oh, my goodness. All right. So today, um, in case you've been up under a rock, Today begins phase three, of, excuse me, phase three of OTAs for the Dallas Cowboys. Um, this is where basically all the installs will go in for the season. Um, going into last week, you had the rookies on the second install. The veterans were already on their fifth install. So it was rookies trying to play catch up. Now, um, this next 10 days... This is the opportunity to actually have classroom work together for all the players, as opposed to having it as virtual reality. There will be on-field working. Um, of course, there's no, okay, they say there's no contact. There's no pads. But we've known past years where uh, in OTAs where Sean Lee got hit by Zach Martin, or then rookie, and tore up his knee. So they're going actually live speed, of course, you know, not taking people to the ground and blocking and so forth. But it's about as close as you can to a real practice. And the thing is, is these are really, really important because this is going to be the biggest learning period for the players. And this is where you start wondering, if the Dallas Cowboys will have a problem. When you think about rookies and teams that, you know, in our past, uh, we think about, say, Anthony Brown in 2016, his rookie year. The first half of the season, he was awful. But by the second half of the season, he started picking it up a bit. And it started, he started to really play well. So you start looking at that and saying, hmm, um, can with our defense that, let's make no mistake about it, it's a complete overhaul. We are starting over on our defense. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. We're having a different philosophy for this defense. Instead of being more of a bend, don't break, keep everything in front of you, this is going to be a fast and physical come-after-you defense. And it's going to be predicated on a lot of the young guys, like Micah Parsons here, Micah, Micah Parsons here. Forgive me, I, I, you know, I am the name butcher. Um, Micah Parsons and guys like him that are going to be rookies that are going to be playing a significant time. So the question will be is, will this defense start out terrible and get better as the season goes on? And, uh, you know, I, I caution you guys because we literally have fans that are ready at the first play to say a guy's a bust. Get rid of him, he's a bust, trade him. Um, understand, these guys, they, they don't come out the box very often ready to be a wily veteran that knows everything. They, they just don't, okay? There is a learning curve. So you have to be, or we're going to need to be a little patient. If there's any good news, let me see if I can pull this on over, is second schedule. All right, let's pull this on over here. Let's get the schedule here. Whew. At least we have four preseason games. That, that will be a bonus for us, at least. We have Tampa Bay on the road. That will be basically a slaughter for our defense. We will be the Lions excuse me, the, the Christians versus the Lions in the Coliseum for that one. Uh, Tom Brady being the veteran probably will slice and dice him. Now, after that, we have an opportunity with the Chargers. I know we're going to be on the road, but technically, are we really on the road? Are we? Um, I think of L.A. and the Chargers who, uh, before they moved into SoFi, Average about 25,000 fans in the stands. And you think about the Dallas Cowboys base that's in Los Angeles. That may feel like a home game. You may have more Cowboy fans there than Charger fans. So I'm just saying that, that that might be an opportunity for the Cowboys defense. You know, I know Justin Hubert is um, 
a great young quarterback, but, you know, there is that sophomore slump. That's a possibility. So, you know, I'm not going to put it past that. Then you got Hurts. Okay. That's another quarterback that only has four games under his belt. Uh, by the time we play him, it'll only be his seventh game. So you're really looking at a guy who's a rookie. Then you got Sam Darnold. Uh, yeah, Sam Darnold going to Carolina. Hmm. Then you've got, of course, Daniel Jones. So when you look at those four games and the fact that this defense will be facing, in essence, first year or guys that look like they're in their first year type quarterbacks, that young defense going against young quarterbacks that turn over the football, you got an opportunity to really gain some confidence. And I think more than anything else, that's what they're going to need. Of course, after that, we got New England. Then we have a bye. We have Kirk Cousins, who, who at times is really, really good, but does turn over the football. Denver with who, uh, the Teddy Bridgewater. The Falcons, of course, with um, Matty Ice. Kansas City, that's going to be another slaughter. Um, the Raiders. So you, you look at the schedule, you're not facing a lot of great quarterbacks other than Tom Brady and Pat Mahomes. Everybody else that you look at on there, but Cam Newton is actually one of the top ones, if you actually think about it, on there. And Justin Hubert. You're not playing the cream of the crop as far as quarterbacks. You're not facing the Aaron Rodgers. You're not facing the Russell Wilsons. And I believe that what you do with the young defense is, in the same way with a young quarterback, the running game is his best friend. If you can run the football with a young quarterback, it helps him out tremendously. If you can rush the quarterback with your young defense, it helps out your linebackers and your cornerbacks as well. So I look for the Cowboys to be very aggressive with these young uh, pups that they got on the line and trying to get there. So uh, the things I'm going to be interested in looking at um, today and throughout this week and stuff is, uh, you know, as the talking heads and things are there, getting pictures and giving you comments and stuff for us here on YouTube, to analyze and go through and dissect is how much work Dak Prescott does on the field. Uh, Dak, who's become a Texas Rangers fan and seems to be there on a regular basis um, cheering on the Texas Rangers. I really want to see how he is on the field, and I think that's going to be, of course, the key for the season. Him as well as Tyron Smith. Um, I don't know if Tyron Smith is going to be there for the OTAs. I know he's been in California uh, working on his neck and his back and stuff like, which has become kind of a regular off season thing for him, but we'll have to wait and see and see what the storylines go. But I don't know about you, but I'm happy as can be that for the next three weeks, the team is actually getting together and molding the 2021 season. That being said, I got a lot of driving I got to do today. So I'm going to get ready to hit the road here early this morning and, of course, I'll give you some updates while we're on the road. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, you know the deal. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. And the only thing else I got to say is...